Hello everybody and welcome to another Elevator Parts video. As you can tell by the title of this video, today we are building this Montgomery Vector call station. Now the reason why we're building it, well, it's pretty obvious, there's nothing here. There's no buttons, there's no nothing. This is just a blank call station with nothing on it. So this was one of the things Andrew and I found in his storage locker, and it literally was just a bag full of vector parts. We had this base, uh, the base part here. We also had this bag full of button pieces, just various parts. And there are also three new button replacements here. You can see there's a button and all the other parts needed for it. So this is pretty interesting. Now, those are just for the buttons. There's still some more pieces missing from this thing. So the button part would cover this side, but if you also recall, there's a little piece in the middle for the light bar, which uh, you can see the light, turn. that's where the light would turn on. And then on the side here, there's some sort of label. Like if it was in the elevator, it would be a floor number, or in this case, we need some arrows. So what we're gonna have to do to get this thing working is obviously we can put the buttons together because we already have the pieces for the buttons. Then we're gonna have to make some sort of light piece in the middle. It won't look exactly like the original, but it'll be pretty close. We'll also need to make some sort of label, so in this case, the down and up arrows. Then on the back, we're gonna have to make some sort of plate that we can attach all the wiring to, a battery box and some LEDs. Okay, so before we start putting this thing together, let's just take a closer look at the actual call station itself, because not really a whole lot is known about these fixtures. Now obviously this isn't going to be a completely original vector button, we're going to have to make some custom parts, but you'll get a general idea of how the actual buttons work, because the buttons are legit. So taking a look at the actual button, we all have seen these buttons before. There's a little screw on the bottom which most likely mounts it into the wall. You can see this button actually has this protective coating still on it, so this is a brand new button. And we'll take the protective coating off at the end, but for now we're going to leave it on just to, well, protect the button as we work on it. Taking a closer look at where the buttons go, you can see on the left side, over here, there are some hexagons where you would put in the brails. In this case, it would just be an arrow. In the middle, this is where the little light would go, the little green light. And over here on the right, this is where the button gets mounted into. I, always, I found this kind of interesting why it's this shape when you'll see See how it's actually mounted when we get to building it. And the same thing can be found on the bottom. Now if we take a look at the back, you can see there's actually a spot for three different buttons. And I've seen a call station before where you have the, the buttons on the first two and then the bottom is a fire service control. So my theory is that the big hole on the bottom is so that you could fit a key switch into it. Also we note these little pegs on the back. My guess is this is where a circuit board gets mounted to it. You mount the board on there and then the LEDs are mounted from behind. So now that we've taken a look at the actual call station itself, let's take a closer look at the buttons and all the pieces that make one of those up. So inside each of the replacement button bags, we have these parts. First, we have the button itself. We've all seen this button design before. Now if we flip it over, we can notice there's this little pin on the back and a little hole inside of it. And that plays an important part when we put the button together. Now this is the piece that actually holds the button into the call station. You'll notice in the button frame that there's a small hole on the left side. And when we lay this button in here, it will line up with that hole. If you've ever seen a broken Montgomery Vector button, this is probably what you would see. Next we have this little spring. Now this is what gives the button its springiness. It sits on top of the metal piece and pushes against the button. Next we have this little spring and this little black plastic piece. Now I'm not going to put it together now, but the spring goes down into the hole and this little black piece goes inside and locks in and it provides a little springy part that presses on the button. And this is the actual contact of the vector. It's literally just a micro switch. That's how it gets that clicky feel when you press it. So now we will assemble the first button on the call station and I'll show you exactly how this one's put together in detail. The first part you'll wanna get is the little metal piece and you'll wanna place it into the call station on the back. You'll wanna make sure that the hole lines up with the little hexagon on the side. It should look something like this when it's done. Now another part that was included in the bag was this little screw. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is screw the, is put the screw in the hole and tighten it down. Once the screw is tightened down, you'll see the metal piece is securely placed in the button. The next thing that you'll want to do is take your spring and lay it down facing up. Then you're going to want to take the button and make sure it's facing the right way. Press it all the way through the metal hole. Press it until it clicks through. You will then notice you can press down on the button. The next step is to flip the button over and access the back side. 
this is where the two smaller pieces we looked at earlier will come into play. The first thing you wanna do is use your hand to press down on the button and place the small spring into the hole. While you're still holding the button down, take a look at the black piece. You'll notice it has two small pieces that stick out on the side. You want to make sure those are facing the same direction as the pieces that are latching the button down. Simply press it all the way through until it pushes into the button. You will then notice it makes a little springy motion when you press down on it. Now the next thing we need to do is, is attach the micro switch to the back. You want to position the micro switch so that the two openings are on the same side as the light. I went ahead and acquired a small screw that fits the hole and I'm going to use that screw to tighten it down. Once you've done those steps, you will notice the button presses like a vector button. The same process needs to be completed with the other button. Unfortunately, all the other vector buttons that were in the bag are broken. So I'm actually gonna have to open up another one of these packages. I really don't wanna do this. I'll still have two other ones that are still original. Let's go ahead and put the other button together. All right, there we go. We have the two buttons installed and they press nicely. So the next thing we need to do is make some other parts for this thing. So that's gonna require a little bit of more out of the box thinking, um, but we can see here, if we look at the back, you can see how the buttons are put together. You can see they simply just press down on the little micro switches there. So now let's figure out a way we can make some of these other pieces. So I was given this little sheet of plexiglass and what I was thinking is maybe we could cut some pieces that are the thickness of this and length and stack them together to try to make a little piece of glass that we could put in there. It's not glass, it's plastic. So I'm gonna have to cut this a little bit. I'm gonna have to get some measurements, cut these pieces down, stack them together, and then see what we can do with them. So let's try it and see if it'll work. All right, so after cutting the different pieces, this is what I came up with. So I made three pieces for each light. We have the bottom piece, we have a clear middle piece, and then another kind of frosty top. And they stick together like this. If you take a look at the photo on the screen, you can see there that's an actual vector. It has a little yellow tint to it almost. So I'm gonna try to replicate that, maybe with by putting a small piece of paper in there. So I'm gonna go see what kind of color paper we have and see if we can make something that looks kind of like that. So I've cut this little yellow piece of paper and stuck it in there. And I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really give the effect that I had hoped for, but I definitely think we could probably get away with it. I think as compared to it without, it adds just that little bit of yellow. So I think I'm gonna add the piece of paper in there. So while we're letting the hot glue gun warm up, this is another suggestion I thought. Um, so the more I look at this, the more I realize the yellow paper just on the clear piece looks more like the call station. I mean, you can see it's very close. So I think we're gonna go with this design instead. We're gonna put the frosted pieces on the bottom and put the clear on top, on top of the, um, the paper. And I think that'll just give it more of a authentic look. You can always flip it over if you don't like it. There it is, check it out. We made two of the little two light pieces and it looks pretty good. Except now this upper button's getting stuck a little bit though, so we're gonna need to readjust. Now it's pressing just fine. So we have the two buttons and the light bars. So we've made some good progress. Now the next step we need to do is 3D print some little brails, some arrows to put in here. We need some sort of directional arrow to tell us where we're going. So we're gonna do that next. 
Okay, so the next part of this project is we need to make a arrow of some sort, the little braille that goes in here. So I have a 3D printer, so let's go ahead and design some custom brailles to put in to the 3D printer and we'll just make our own. So the first thing we need to do is get the dimensions of this area. Now if you look closely, there's some holes there which we would push a piece into. But I think what we can do is we can just 3D print the regular size and then just hold it in there with friction. Because it's not like this is actually going to be used in, a, um, in an actual elevator. We can kind of do whatever we want. So let's go ahead and get some measurements of this thing here and then we'll go ahead and model it on the computer. Okay, so I have taken the parts off the printer, and here they are. Here are the two little arrows, which we will be using for the button. So here's the button, and you can see here they slide right on in, just like that, and the button still presses. Now, we want the arrows to be white, just like how they are uh, in like, the actual buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint these white, and then we're going to do a little bit of sanding on them to kind of smooth them out a little bit, and then slide them into the button and then we'll have the completed front of the button. Now that these have dried up, let's see how they look. Oh wow, look at that. That came out nice. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand down the sides a little bit just so they're a little smoother and we're gonna put it in the button. And here's what it looks like. And I think it looks pretty cool. So the next step we need to do is turn it over and figure out how we're gonna wire this beast. So I'm gonna need some sort of board to go on the back to mount LEDs to and then we're gonna have to wire it all up to a battery pack. Alrighty guys, here it is. I went ahead and finished the wiring and you can see when you press the buttons, they light up. If we take a look at the back, you can see how it's all done. There's the battery box in the middle. We've got the buttons on the top and the bottom. The little LED bars that I made here. So when you press in on the buttons, it simply lights them up. So that means this button is complete. Or is it? Now you may notice here, it's a different color than normal. That's because this thing has the original protective uh, paper on it. So it is time to peel it off. Here we go.
Uh oh, it's peeling off really terribly. There it is. Wow, look at that. Now let me go ahead and uh, get a towel. I'm just gonna wipe off those fingerprints there. Now have any of you ever seen a vector button that shiny before? I don't think I have ever seen a button that shiny. Wow, that is awesome. So there it is guys, the building of a Montgomery Vector call station. Hope you enjoyed watching how this thing went from being literally nothing to something that's pretty epic. I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out. This is probably one of my favorite builds I've done in a long time. Had a ton of fun doing it and I hope you guys maybe learned a little bit more about the Montgomery Vector. So anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching. If you have any more ideas for elevator part related videos, stick them down below in the comments section. I'm always open for more ideas. But anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.